Well, I was hoping we could be friends, but scorpions have really obvious body language. He's giving me the, I didn't come here to party look. This bump? No? All right. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. This time on Beyond the Glass, we're on a hunt for arachnids, eight-legged arthropods, who, if given the proper enclosure, actually make very interesting pets. <laughs> Just maybe not the cuddliest. More ants. Oh, hey, Devin, check it out. We got vinegaroon. So this is a vinegaroon, or whip scorpion. It's not the Asian forest scorpion we're looking for, but they are similar species in that they're both arachnids, but this isn't a true scorpion. They don't actually have a stinger, so they're totally harmless and they can't hurt you. Their bark is a lot worse than their bite. They definitely kind of remind me of a Tim Burton creature. Since their habitat is the same as the habitat of the Asian forest scorpion, the data we take down for the forest scorpion can also apply to the vinegaroon or whip scorpion. They need a pretty moist environment considering you tend to find them under surfaces. So flipping them is a common way to find these guys. All right, little dude, time to return you home. Now let's keep looking for that scorpion. So board flipping often is great for finding scorpions. And while we did find a whip scorpion or vinegaroon, we didn't find our target. So we decided to change up methods using a cool party trick. Black light. Scorpions glow in it. And it makes them stick out like a sore thumb. So we're gonna hike around these trails using black light to find scorpions, because it's a lot of fun. Oh, cool. Check it out. <laughs> Not what we're looking for. It does look really cool from right here, though. Wow, the black light is just bouncing back the radiance of this animal and giving it the name Sunbeam Snake. These guys are really, really unique in the fact that their skin is like a prism of color, which is why they're called Sunbeam Snakes. Uh, funny enough, in Cambodia, they call them gasolina, because if you ever seen gasoline on the ground, it's got that shimmery iridescence of light, and so do they. Now, one thing you'll notice different about this than others you might have seen is that its head is white. That's because sunbeam snakes go through what they call an ontogenetic change. They're born with the white heads, but they grow out of it. And as it gets bigger, it'll become solid black, but with all this shimmer. Now, you might have seen these guys at a reptile show or, or pet store. And it makes sense. They're not that difficult to care for. And as you can see, straight out of the wild, they're completely docile. What a great animal for educational purposes. One of the nice things about these guys, they're just overly friendly. Almost to your own mistake. How do you know I'm not gonna eat you? I'm a predator, dude. You should be terrified. Some people are captive breeding sunbeam snakes and that's something that I can really get behind. Because an animal like this that adapts all to captivity should be captive bred. This one though, gets to return home to the wild. Remember, say no to predators. Don't be so friendly. Don't talk to strangers.
That's what we're looking for. That's what I'm talking about. When I say Scorpions are black light reactive, I mean reactive. Look at that thing, it's nuclear. Now, without my black light on it, black, but with it, it's in party mode. So this is the Asian Forest Scorpion. See how he's got kind of a tiny tail and really big pinchers? As a general rule, he's probably not the most dangerous scorpion. If you're allergic to bees, it can be dangerous. But if you're not, they're not that dangerous. This guy's already kind of amped up. Uh, don't want to waste his venom on me. I'm hoping by the time I'm done, we can be friends and he'll be game for me picking him up. Notice the soil here is pretty moist. So when you're setting them up, you want a substrate that retains moisture. Because if it's really dry, you notice the side of their body is kind of open exposed. They do lose a lot of that liquid content right through that opening. So you don't want them to have a substrate that's gonna absorb it out like dry peat because that will sponge it from them and then dehydrate them, which isn't good for the scorpion. Now these guys often create burrows and I wouldn't be surprised this hole right here, yep, is just his size. Come out, grab a little dinner, and go back to bed. Well, I was hoping we could be friends, but scorpions have really obvious body language. He's giving me the, I didn't come here to party look. But about his party trick, there are some theories. Moths and other insects see in the UV spectrum and moonlight actually creates that light source. So it could be that. No 100% answers yet though. Hopefully someday we will know, but for now, what we do know is it's cool. I'm gonna get my measurements and let this guy on his way. You gonna hold this for me? Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. All right, so let me write you up. All right. Fist bump. Oh, 